So alkaline blockers, OSIN. Alkaline blockers, OSIN. Does that make sense? Alkaline blockers, OSIN. And I always do that because there's a lot of OSIN. There's terazosin, there's doxazosin, there's prazosin. And I think there's another couple. But we can take the boards or CNS or my test and we see that OSIN becomes the alkaline blocker. Now, the most important question for you, you're at the bedside right now. You're actually getting ready to administer that, administer that to your patient. Why are you giving them an alkaline blocker? That's the most important question. Would y'all agree? And I know you guys are helping her over there to decrease the blood pressure, right? Now, is there another indication for the OSIN or the alkaline blockers? BPH, would y'all agree? Because does it also open up the tube down there? So is it a vasodilator? Can I give you a big hint about all antihypertensive meds? Guess what they all do? They vasodilate. Oh, isn't that easy? They all vasodilate, but with different mechanisms. So the one, which is the one that we actually specifically give that one blocker for uh, blood pressure? What's the uh, marketing name? The trade name we use? Doxazosin. Doxazosin. That's right. That's Flomax. Most of your be and since it's the name, Flomax, flow, you know, Carduro. Get it? Cardiac? Oh, yay. Carduro. Yeah. So if you look, if you look at these meds, you'll you'll get both names, right? You'll get both names. Cardura. Will that help you memorize it and remember it? Because women can probably take Cardura. I think safely because it's not hormonally based. Now, the last one for women do not have prostate glands. <laughs> the last that we promise, women do not have red. So, so you get red. So, but now this is the key. This is the key. Now that nurses forget, right? They forget that. Um, all they remember it for nursing school is for BPH, the non-eustetic hypertrophy, right? Guess what they forgot to, to monitor? The blood pressure. So you know, here comes PT, they're getting ready to get up and work out and everything, and they gave doxazosin. And they're going, oh no, it's for their, it's for their BPH. Guess what? Then they go like this and they're going, oh, I'm feeling dizzy. Your critical thinking, first of all, was not in place. <clears throat> Hopefully it'll kick in and say, what did I give to them to make them, they could be immobility, but what meds, if they don't know that fast, it could be a safety issue. Then yikes, because they could fall over with that orthostatic hypertension. And if they are dizzy, I would definitely, anytime you give any sort of anti-hypertensive meds, what do you do, like, you have them dangle? Yeah, so you have a day going, how you feel, how you feel? That sitting, laying down, sitting, and then standing up, and then you get the blood pressure again. Now, you call the doctor and say they were orthostatic. They may actually have to decrease that dosage on any, uh, you know, antihypertensive. Okay, so make sure, okay, alkaline blocker, or OSIN, okay, alkaline blockers is OSIN, yeah. So really get that name. So when you're sending to the board, you remember. Alkaline blocker? Oh, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Good job. Oh, You'll remember. Because it's going to be on your test next week. And they're an alkaline supplement. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's right. Oh, good one for oh. you. Oh, no. <laughs> this is one of my favorite drugs ever. I mean, not personally. I wouldn't take it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is carbonyl. Oh, yeah. Love this one. Uh, yeah. 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 Say what? Oh, 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 oh. It's not even up there. You're right. Yeah. It is. Oh, yeah. Wait, 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 wait. What did you say? Is it even up there? It is it's an alpha cushion. <laughs> oh, I love this. I'm going to write this in the word. How does it end? Is it ending? LOL? Yes. yes. 
or is it Ilal or oh, Olal? Olal. Olal. Is it different? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so remember that. Watch this. I'm going to teach you guys. I love this part. So it's called Bailal. I remember the first dose I gave. Oh, I'm a little bit crazy with remembering things. Oh my gosh. <coughs> so it's not a like a metoprolol. Yeah. Do you know he already said it? What makes it different from a it is a B B1 blocker. She's right. You are not wrong in saying <coughs> it's partially a B1 blocker. It's a beta blocker. And what else are you blocking in there? Oh, 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 and we just talked about that, didn't we? So watch this. Oh my gosh. Now, this drug is miraculous. Status post MI or with heart failure or cardiomyopathy it is so doubly doubly cardioprotective because not only do you get the anti-hypertensive effect, and then let's do this again. Oh my gosh. We're going to have to talk about that afterload there and the systemic vascular resistance. So remember last week when we talked about that left <coughs> ventricle, that if you have hypertension down here in your systemic circulation, what's that going to do to your left ventricle? Who said it? 100%. Oh, give her a gold star. Hypertrophic. Now, what's your myocardium? Goes hypertrophic? Is it, is it disease now? Forever. It's, ne it's not going to be to rehab it. Maybe a little bit stronger, but it's never going to pop back to normal. So there's going to be a risk of heart failure, right? Because once it goes hypertrophic, it goes weak and floppy, right? And then now it can't pop. So now watch this, this is so cool. So this part, alpha blockers are going to systemically vasodilate, right? Because it's an alpha one blocker. Now, what's the other thing that it is going to help from cardio protection? What's that? Yes, it knows. Is it going to block the catecholamine and the sympathetic stimulation here a little bit to that SA node? And what's that, what will that result in? Being a beta blocker. Decrease in her heart. Oh my gosh, you guys are doing great today. Yeah. And what's the clinical benefit of decreasing the heart rate? It, yes, it is a workload. It decreases the workload and the oxygen demand of the heart muscle. The thing that you want really yearly with beta blocking is lowering the heart rate, decrease. And when, when a diseased myocardium is working too hard, it will break down even more and weaken even more. So, and then the other benefit is that when, you're, when you get a beta blocker is it um, helps the chambers to fill. Now, what, what's the benefit of more blood getting inside that chamber? More perfusion to the myocardium. And when does the uh, when does the heart coronary vessels actually perfuse? What uh, is it? Huh? Diastole. It's very diastole. Very good. So when you get that good filling, nice and slow, giving good oxygen and increasing the workload, not breaking down the heart muscle. When you're getting that good slow diastole, you know, hard it relaxing you're getting good perfusion to the myocardium. Mm -hmm. What a diseased heart needs is O2 in there. Mm -hmm. So guess what? This plan right here is amazing. It'll make them, uh, you know, slow heart rate by mechanisms that we like, mm -hmm. right? Causing good cardio protection and then double cardio protection, it really protects that left ventricle from overworking. And certainly if you have a myocardial infarction, in that left ventricle, or you have left-sided heart failure, you need carbavalol. That should be on the list. <gasps> Whoa, you did very well though. She knew it, she knew what it was. So alpha one, beta one blocker. And then she's gonna let the alpha one block and then yellow over here, 
and it would be out one part. That's so that's a difference. So this is what you want to look at. I think there's another uh, alkaline blocker. The first time I gave this, it was a female patient. I remember the bed number. I was like, that's poo poo. <laughs> and I didn't know what carbamolol was yet. I looked it up. I look at all my drugs. And you know what the patient said to me? She says, I need my antiarrhythmic. That's what she said to me. She says, my, uh, my carbamolol, I need that. It's for my heart rhythm. I told her, I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. So she was taught that it was to raise her pulse rate down, which is true, right? But she, she doesn't know that it was a double protector. Okay, what time do we have? What's your first name? Hi, Josephine. I do have a question for you. Oh, speaking of beta blockers, and let's see what this does here. So, what do the beta blockers do? Your regular beta blockers. Oh, that's right. So, negative. Oh, 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 very good. So, what will you be monitoring before you give a beta blocker? That's it. And what's your magic number? Yeah. Oh, she's ready. Is she ready to give a med? If I had her in clinical, we would pack the med right away. That's what I do. Like if I have her in my bedside in clinical or my to my side, I say, okay, why are you giving this? Yeah, you know, what are you gonna monitor? What are the side you know, all that stuff? She's ready. Did y'all agree? No. She was on that. Okay, very good. Yeah, and it does slow the conduction of the heart. And it also relaxes the heart. Again, a very good clinical benefit for heart pain. Right? And the beta C electrical impulse. It right? is. So the way you differentiate your chronotrope from your zoonotrope, yeah. I always think of chrono as partly. Specifically. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Never because the DR, like that your paper says, but I just was, you know, conductivity, I don't know why I just kind of get it to like that's okay. The yeah. word, I can get the word just to get my Think about the B, yeah. conductivity, the B in conductivity. Mm -hmm. And then, and I think that the, it's more conceptual. We have a hard time with the concept. Like, how is that different from, uh, heart, you know, heart rate? It's very different, yeah. Because you think about the B1 receptors of the SA nodes, that's heart rate, yeah. So heart rate is accurate, but <clears throat> but conductivity is the, Actually, the electrical impulse that makes it. The heart, so yeah. just think about the SA nodes, heart rate. And that's going to be your negative chrono. Yeah. Slowing down the heart rate. Now, the rest of the conduction throughout the heart, so say like you have okay atria, but your ventricles are going like wacko. Yeah. A, a negative uh, dromo would help slow so down the ventricles. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah, it's almost like Kinsey in a way. Yeah, yeah. Okay, very, very nice. All right, Adriana, she's got a free ticket already. She actually answered the first question. We haven't had so Elizabeth, we have another beta blocker question for you. We know it's cardioprotective by you know lowering the pulse rate, uh, decreasing the workload of the heart. Now, this is very important, and we talked about this last week. Is there any particular patients that this particular drug would be contraindicated in? I don't think so. Yeah. Um, asthma? Right. And why? Um, Sleep. Sleep. So it's non selective. I'll give you a hint. It's a non selective beta blocker. So, what's your other adrenergic receptor that perhaps could be receiving? Some blockade. B1, you have one part. Is it the. I'm going to give you a hint. What, what receptors, what adrenergic receptors live in the lung? Is it B1, which is this B2? B2, that's right. So when you, when you block B2 receptors in the lung, you're going to get bronco. Exactly. Good job. So you have to be really careful with any reactive airway disease, like, like asthma. I would even be cautious with CO2 
go through these. But no, I do caution to see anything respiratory. So maybe the doc doesn't know that. Like we do like the ED, it, the patient comes in and they're a mystery. And certainly if you don't have any history from family or you know any medical stuff, you've got to figure it out right there. Now, how do you know that they're asthmatic? <laughs> no. Yeah, you can ask. What about wheezing? Wheezing. Yeah, if I'm, I'm on my bed, I'm like, God, I'm hearing it, feeling the dirty, derpy, real wind, yeah, I'm not in the bed. I can hear audible wheezes. I'm like, oh crap. This is when we start the cardiac patients, you know, they're tapping along or whatever. So you have to get that physical assessment going right away. And then I'm, I'm hearing wheezing. It can be fluid. But it also could be asthma, and you could kill them with the beta blocker. You see what I'm saying? Because it will exacerbate it. Yes, ma'am. Oh. Late source? I don't know what she was calling on you. you? I didn't hear if she said ma'am or man, so. Can I just hear that? Oh. <laughs> nah, you go. My, my question isn't going to elude me, so go ahead. <laughs> no, go ahead. I got I got Go ahead. So, like, when um, my mom was having some heart problems and we went in and she was short of breath. Yeah. So that's one of those things I would be like, okay, why are you, can I give her this? Because she's short of breath. You know what I mean? She might be, because she wasn't like, right. yeah, I'm just, yeah, she was conscious. I guess you could ask them then. Yeah, yeah you could. Yeah. Sure. But if I, the, the major thing is listening to this person. Yeah. If I'm here to leave man, I'm going to question, why are you leaving? And it could be because they're going in a heart failure. Because heart failure is not only a crack hole. Or it could be a, a related heart, like an MRI. You can have uh, shortness of breath. But it's a wheezing. It's that reactive airway mm -hmm. that you want to see as or nerves. Does that make sense? Yeah. <coughs> Tubes. Bad or nerves have a big effect on it, too. It doesn't bother you. Mm -hmm. <coughs> oh my gosh. All right. Actually, like naturally compensates to try and bring it up and gives it some spritz. 
and it's part of your starts off in your well your liver has like an enzyme that it releases and then your kidneys will release renin and then from there your lungs will release base and it goes from like angiotensinogen to angiotensin one angiotensin two and then the ace and it blocks the ace from increasing your blood pressure I wrote a paper on it. So I really <laughs> went to you did fabulously well. She did the whole lecture. <laughs> oh my gosh. That was 100% beautiful. And let's do exactly. Okay, do you have a line of the educator right there? Plus you know. The paper did not. Okay. Get your agreement again. What time do we have? This is so great. This is a great setup. So, RAS system, and she's, she went all the way back to describing a very, very important compensatory mechanism you guys have. So, there's a couple, there's three things that I think uh, about when you have compensatory mechanisms to keep the blood pressure up. It's going to be the RAS system, and we'll, we'll, I'll reiterate just what you said. And then there's two other. Hormonally, what are two other hormones that can maintain your blood pressure? High volume. ADH, oh, and what's the other one? Aldosterone, which is actually a part of the RAS system. So in times of hypotension, and let me give you guys a perfect example. So if you've ever been in the field, right? You're, you set up your tent and you have a battalion aid station and you're out there in the desert, like Oro Grande, which is south this way, right? By El Paso. And you're out there in your BDUs in the summer. You're sweating like crazy. Most of our field injuries were what? Dehydration. Seriously. They kept me all dizzy and weird and feel like they're gonna pass out. It's because they don't live, you don't even think mentally, you lose fluid all the time. You don't even know how much you do, even if you're drinking water left and right, right? Well, they, those folks out there, so we would be out there, and <clears throat> your RAS system will kick in, and your ADH will kick in, your antidiuretic hormone, to maintain vascular volume, so you don't die, so you don't go into hypovolemia and shock, right? So RAS is one of them. The renin comes from the kidney, right? They come from, so this is renin. And the first one is going to be angiotensin one, right? Angiotensin one. And then the ACE, angiotensin converting enzyme happens <clears throat> right here. ACE is needed or angiotensin converting enzyme is needed to change angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. Now, this tells us a lot about angiotensin 2. What does angiotensin 2 do? Exactly. And that's the part that brings up the blood pressure. Especially when you need it compensatorily, right? And then the second A, actually, I'm going to put that right there. And then the second A there is aldosterone. Now, this is the perfect time to differentiate aldosterone, because this is, you're gonna get this along, you know, in testing, and then ADH. Now, I, I wanna ask you guys, what's the difference in aldosterone and ADH? Aldosterone comes from your adrenal glands, right? The aldosterone comes from the uh, posterior pituitary, mm -hmm. you know, so because kidney vet here, it stimulates to release, and antidiuretic, holds on to what specifically? Water. 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 Mm -hmm. Water. It's, it's significant. When we do it later, this is going to be really important to know this. So always write ADH2. It's specific. Like, what if you were to hold on to too much water? What would that, that do to your uh, sodium concentration in the blood? Dilute. Dilute it. That's right. So hyponatremia. So when we get into SIDH, you'll understand that concept. But what does aldosterone pull back into the veins? Two bits. So Sodium. Yeah, yes, right. you see how you have two separate mechanisms to keep your blood pressure.
pressure and your volume up. I'm sorry, volume and your air pressure up. But watch this. See the S P and now Doc left hand pistol. Right there. And this is how you can differentiate this one. They both maintain blood volume, therefore uh, blood pressure, right? So going back to our prills, our prills, your ACE inhibitor. We know now the normal physiologic pumping is quite heavy in this, right? Now what if you have a person who has hypertension? And in this case, they have, you know, remember hypertension consists of two things, too much blood volume or too much vagal constriction. I think that perhaps you being in school, I bet your blood pressure is a bit higher than normal, <laughs> right? And then you think, especially before a test, you guys are almost always in an adrenal state, a very low grade sort of fight or flight response, because you're worried about, oh my God, I've got to get up early, I've got to get up for clinical, I cannot miss school today. You know, you guys are gonna be traumatized forever. <laughs> You know, so your body are living in that adrenergic world. So therefore, some of you, especially with the genetic predisposition, you're going to be a little bit higher on your blood pressure. Maybe sustained, but you can't feel it. That's why it's a healer. Now, the thing about ACEs, oh man, I've got to tell you this. There's a couple of things here. And I know we have like two minutes before break, but I kind of do want to get through this and review this it will decrease the serum vascular resistance. And that means, remember all anti-hypertensives, vasodilate? Well, that's the mechanism here for your thrills, right? If all vasodilate decreases the serum vascular resistance, protecting that left ventricle. It's a, it can be cardioprotective, not like the, the wall, you know, beat. Guess what else it's uh, protective of? The renal vessels. This is the most miraculous thing about your ACE inhibitor, especially diabetics that have terrible it's a vascular disease, right? Diabetes is 100, it is a vascular disease. So these vessels, you wonder why uh, diabetic patients have bad kidneys, is because of the destruction and sclerosis of those vessels leading to the kidneys. And they're, they get tighter and, you know, really damaged and narrow lumen. They're very hypertensive, they're tight, right? So these ACE inhibitors, like blood clinical, oh my gosh, they are nephro-protective. So remember that, I think that might be a question. So they're, they're not only anti-hypertensive for the heart, to save the heart, but they're nephro-protective. Isn't that amazing? So cool, I love it. Can you say again what benefits the heat does instead of vascular resistance? Yeah, and what that means is the afterload, it has to do with uh, the, the pressure, the, the pressure that was required to squeeze through a tight tube. That's the afterload, which also uh, relates to the systemic vascular resistance. So if you have a tight, if, you have, if you're just hypertensive, tight vessels all the way down, that part is working hard. It's becoming hypertrophic over time. Mm -hmm. You don't want that. Because what, remember, hypertrophic myocardial tissue is damaged, pathologic tissue. You don't want that. So you want to widen the vessels, i.e. vasodilate, and so you protect the heart. <coughs> so you heart. So you're, are you decreasing, like vasodilating here, are you decreasing systemic vascular resistance? Yeah. Okay, it looks like it's break time. I could probably do another two minutes, but we'll get this in break.